Hi fellows and welcome to this video! Today I will be teaching you how to create your first storyboard with Unreal Engine 5 using Praxinos plugins, Iliad and Epos, even if you've never used any of these tools before. First of all, I will be assuming that you went through the steps necessary to install Unreal Engine 5 on your computer. This software is free, but before using it, you will have to validate Epic Games conditions and install the Epic Games Store before installing Unreal Engine 5. If you don't know how to, you will find the details on the Unreal Engine website. Once installed, you will also have to find Epos and Iliad in the marketplace to add them to your cart. Then, valid the free purchase to get them both into your Unreal Engine vault. Now, install Epos on Unreal Engine 5 and repeat the process for Iliad. If you've never created an Unreal Engine project before, you will need first to launch Unreal Engine 5. If you are using Unreal Engine 5 for the very first time, it might take several minutes, depending on your computer's hardware. Then create a new blank project like this one. OK, so since the concept of Epos is to create a storyboard with a 3D environment as a reference, let's find an environment. Fortunately, Unreal Engine Marketplace is full of great contents and there are many free stuffs you can get. In this video, I will be using Acidville Town because this environment is quite light, which is perfect if you are not into the PC Master Race with another computer. So, put the environment into your cart, valid your cart and go back to the library's vault to add this to a project. Okay, we will be waiting for the environment to be added to the project before launching the corresponding project. Once loaded, we will have to do a few things before having fun. First, make sure Epos and Iliad are both enabled. To do so, go to the menu Edit, Plugins, 2D and check Epos and Iliad. You will be asked to restart, but first, let's also check another option. Close the plugin panel and go back to the menu Edit, Project Settings. In the search bar, write HIT and find the option Support UV from HIT results. This is very important because if you don't check this option, you won't be able to paint with Iliad. Last but not least, we will disable four keyboard shortcuts. To do so, go to the Editor Preferences and write Sequencer in the search bar. Then disable the key Up for Jump to Start, the key Down for Play Forward, the keys Left and Right for Step Forward and Step Backward. Then only now you can restart your project. OK, so the project is reloaded and we can really start to work. Let's display the content browser with the shortcut Control Space. Then we will open the folder Acidville Town Maps Demonstration. The first launch will take a moment, but after that, it will be much faster. Now that the map has been loaded, let's see how to navigate an Unreal Engine viewport. Use the right click to tilt the point of view up and down or pan to the left and to the right. Use the left click to move forward or backward, or pan the point of view to the left and to the right. Use the middle click to dolly up and down, or travel left and right. Use the mouse wheel to zoom in and out. OK, let's now clean our interface and kick these panels out uh, in order to focus on what's important your storyboard. We will now click on the movie clap at the top and select the option New Storyboard. In this panel, you will have various options to be changed, for instance, the name of your storyboard or the path to save it. By default, the storyboard will be saved at the root of the Unreal Engine project, but you can choose a different path if necessary. Below, you will see many settings related to the naming convention. I won't explain all of them right now, because the point is just to understand the basics of Epos, but if you are curious, you can read the corresponding lessons in the user guide. 
OK, let's click on Create a Storyboard. Automatically, a new panel will appear. This is the Sequencer. The Sequencer is like a timeline, and it's an important module in Unreal Engine. It is kind of an editing tool with Unreal Engine to create video sequences by assembling existing elements, a little like Premiere, DaVinci, or Final Cut. But here with Epos, we will create sequences and create elements with the sequencer, just like you would proceed with a 2D animation software or a storyboarding software. So, right now, we have a storyboard with an empty board track. I will hover my cursor above the tiny plus to create a new shot. The shot will soon correspond to a footage filmed by a camera. But first, we have to create this camera. To do so, let's click on the plus icon in the middle and configure our camera. You can see there are many options, such as the ratio, the lens settings, the aperture, or the focal length. Under camera settings, you will find other details about the plane's name, margins, and texture. Planes are a 3D object to be placed in the environment in front of the camera. A texture is a raster-based image to be saved in the content browser, which will coat the plane. You can only change the height of the texture because the width is automatically calculated based on the camera ratio. In this case, a height of 1080 will give a width of 1920. OK, let's create the camera and the plane. We can see the viewport change to show the camera view only. Plus, we are piloting the camera, which means we can move both the camera and the plane in the environment. If the blue grid annoys you, you can disable it by clicking on the gear icon to change the grid type. You can also get rid of the red, green, blue arrows named Gizmo by clicking twice on the option Game View or use the shortcut G. And if you're annoyed by the red message in the top left corner, well, you can either do what it tells you to do, that is, build the light, or you can use the command tool at the bottom and type Disable All Screen Messages to hide it. OK, since we created our first shot, camera and plane, it is time now to draw something. To do so, enable the Iliad mode at the top right area. A new panel on the left will be displayed, and if you've never used Iliad before, it will look like this. So let's arrange our interface a little bit. First, I will click on the top bar menu, which is more like a quick access bar with a few features like Save, Undo, Redo or Erase mode. Then I will add the brush selector, which will allow me to change my brush settings. And then I will click on the Layers tag to display the layers of the current image into the current plane. And I will add the Tool panel to have an access to the Float fill and the bin to delete the content of the current layer. By the way, this panel is pretty empty at the moment. In the near future, it should get more options like Selection Tools and Shape Tools. Now, I will select the plane in the sequencer, which will be highlighted with blue. You may notice that selecting the plane will show you a layer in the Layers tag. We are ready now to draw directly on the plane in the viewport. And sorry in advance for my lack of drawing skills. <laughs> we created our first drawing in our storyboard. However, a plane can contain several drawings. To do so, scrub the cursor in the sequencer a little further, Hover your mouse above the plane and click on the tiny icon with a walking dude. A new key in a shape of a diamond will appear. This is your new drawing. And if I use these buttons right there, I can flip between both drawings. I can also enable a light table to display the previous drawing. Okay, let's do another stickman. By the way, if you want to focus more on the drawing and see the environment less, you can change the settings of the plane's background. To do so, click on the gear and click on the colored rectangle near background to edit the color and its alpha value. I'll create a third drawing. And you will notice I can't really see my drawing because there is an object in the foreground. To fix that, I can display the 2D viewport to show my drawing without the 3D environment.
Let's play it. Wow, what a piece of art, isn't it? If the timing does not suit you, you can move the drawing with a simple drag and drop. Okay, now let's imagine we would like this shot to introduce two characters doing different actions at their own pace. Well, the best option here is to create a new plane so each character can be moved separately. I will scroll down under the plane to click on the plus and create a new plane to draw several images. You can see we have two planes with three drawings each, but with their own timing. Now, I will add several shots because my storyboard can be made of only one shot. That would be quite a short story. I hover my mouse above the shot to display a plus at each tips. I use the one on the right to add several shots after with a longer duration than the original shot. I create a camera and a plane on the second shot and I will move forward using my mouse and the shortcuts up, down, left, right on my keyboard. Okay, I found the right angle to draw another character leaning on the wooden fence. I will also create a new layer in the layer stack to fill this character with white, which will help me to focus on the character. So I add a layer, drag and drop it under the first layer. I increase the size of my brush. And I display the panel color wheel to select white. I paint it by hand because sadly there is no filling tools at the moment. Okay, you see now, it is pretty obvious that the character is not behind the wooden fence. If I quit Iliad mode and stop piloting the camera, we can see the plane is far from the fence. I will even disable the game view to display the camera. If I click on the camera, I will see at the bottom right corner what it actually sees. So I pin it to keep this view. And so the idea now is to move the plane backward to place it behind the fence. To do so, I select the plane in the viewport to display an option just above the remote named Plane Distance. This will allow us to move the plane backward and forward and automatically make it bigger or smaller and keep the same ratio with the camera. I can type the value or I can hold the click and move to the left or to the right to adjust it. Okay, sounds good. Now we can again enable the camera view. To do so, you can either hover the shot to display the double arrow and select piloting the camera, or you can click on the camera icon in the board track to lock the camera view. This mode is recommended if you don't need to move the camera anymore. I unpin the camera view and I enable Iliad mode. I change a few settings in my brush and I can continue my drawing. Now, if I scrub in the sequencer with the option Camera Lock on, I can see my storyboard as an animatic and it automatically switches from camera to camera. Let's now add a third shot with a camera and a plane. In this shot, let's imagine I would like to create a camera move with a pan from the left to the right. I scrub the cursor further in the sequencer, then I use my right click to pan the camera to the right. You will notice a red dot will appear in the sequencer. It symbolizes the camera key with its new position. I will do something quickly on Iliad, then scrub into the sequencer. And you will notice that the plane will follow the camera move. If you don't want that and need the plane to remain at a specific position, hover the plane, click on the double arrow and click on Detach the plane. By the way, if the view in the sequencer is too narrow, you can zoom in it by modifying the handles on this bar. When the shot gets bigger, plane's option will be immediately accessible. Okay, I detach the plane and now if I scroll, we can see the plane remains at the same place. But if I add a new plane below, this plane will be still attached to the camera. 
this is really helpful since depending on the action in the shot, you can have independent planes and attached planes. At this point, I think you already have the basics to train yourself with Epos and Iliad. Just a reminder note, when creating a new project, don't forget to activate the option Support UV from Hatch Results in the project settings or you won't be able to draw. Disable the shortcuts up, down, left and right in the sequencer shortcuts to prevent misbehaviors with the camera. There are two ways to activate the camera view, either by piloting it or by locking the camera in the board track. Piloting the camera means you will see a single camera view and any move in the viewport may add a key, so be careful. When you're done with piloting the camera, I advise you to use the lock option instead. When Iliad mode is enabled and a plane is selected, the left mouse button will only draw. You won't be able to use the left click to move around. Actually, when you don't draw, I advise you to disable Iliad mode to prevent any misbehavior. Don't forget to save frequently. If you don't and experience a crash, you will lose all your assets and actors that were unsaved. The shortcuts to do so is Ctrl Shift S on Windows and Command Shift S on Mac. Thank you for watching this video. All the tutorials will be recorded in the coming weeks. In the meantime, you can also study the user guide online. I really hope you will enjoy making storyboards with Epos. Please feel free to join our Discord to share your feedback, questions and ideas. This tool can only evolve if you tell us what you need. Epos and Iliad are free and made by a small team. So if you want to support our work, please like, comment and share this video. You can even tip us on Patreon or buy great brush packs on the marketplace. Thank you again, take care and see you soon!